Hello and welcome to the Creative Control Room Podcast pre-show. I didn't even check if we're live yet. Are we live? Are we live? Yeah, we live. Cool. Um. Oh, really? Upgrade your plan to remove branding. Is this showing branding now using Restream? I got to check this. Hold on. If that's the case. Oh, no, it's not there. That's weird. Um, in Restream, it's showing me that I have a little Restream branding mark up at the top. But I don't see it on YouTube, so I'll take it. Anyway, <clears throat> hello and welcome to the pre-show here. This is where we go around and make sure all systems are go. Check out the lighting, all the things. Um, recording here, recording and streaming there. Let's check our uh, drop frames. No drop frames. Looking good there. Camera angle here. Nice. Camera angle here. Good. Got a, an additional camera angle that we'll be playing with a little bit today. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but we're going to do the same thing that we did the last time. Um, because I know it's a little after 10, but I had a late night. And... Uh, we're going to wake up a little bit with a little bit of Wordle. So that's what it's going to do. I don't see. Okay. Cool. Good to know. Yeah, it's it's here. I'll show you, uh, Robert. Welcome, by the way. Um, yeah, right here. Remove branding. Upgrade your plan to remove branding. That's very strange, but whatever. As long as it's not on the actual stream. So we're going to do a game of Wordle. If you don't want to stick around for Wordle, just come back in like five minutes. Um, what do we want to start with? Let's start with wrist. Off to a great start. No, <laughs> fantastic. All right, how about no? No, there's no S. Um, F L A. What F L A I R? Flare. Okay, got two letters on the board. Letters that come before. L, do, P L L A C E. No, nope, it's not P, but we do have a C now. <clears throat> no. What about? Hold on. It's not F. Mm, black, B L A C K. Boom. Did a lot easier this week, or a lot better this week than uh, the last time. Okay, so we got <laughs> we got Wordle out of the way. Um, let's go back here. Oh, I gotta turn this little light on. Excuse me. I'm still waking up today. Okay. I got some good stuff to talk about today. I'm going around making sure that we are live on all the channels. Looks like we are. Twitch is up as well. Fantastic. All right. Um, what is this? Episode 104? Cool. Let's uh, let's just go ahead and get into this one then, shall we? Here we go. This is the Creative Control Room Podcast, a show for creators, makers, and doers, where my goal is to help you make to the max. Hello, welcome to episode number 104 of the Creative Control Room Podcast. I'm your operator, Ryan Hafey, and in this episode, we're going to talk about uh, some upgrades I've made to my studio here a little bit, specifically this portion that I'm looking at of the studio. Um, but first of all, if you are new here, my name is Ryan Hafey. This is my creative control room. This is where I talk all things photography, videography, video production, video editing, podcasting, live streaming, FPV on occasion, and everything in between. Uh, and I try to come on here. Uh, I try to come on here every every week and give you guys some knowledge and some things that uh, to take away um, just based on my experience, things that I've learned um, in my time uh, doing this and just kind of uh, being in that world. So if that's something you'd be interested in, it would be great if you would hit that subscribe button wherever you happen to be watching or listening. Also, follow me on social media at Ryan Hafey on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Um, although uh, I, I should probably uh, have an update for that because I haven't um, – uh, I, uh, I I deleted social media apps off of my, my phone. I still have them on, on my work phone because my work phone 
I mean, I, I work in social media, so I kind of need to have them on there. But um, I've found it's it's better now that I've uh, I've taken the, the social media off my phone. It's it's been nice to not like it. It took a little bit to you know for the urge to constantly check my phone and go away, and it's still there. And not you know I'll still cut, pick up my work phone and flip through social media every now and then, but um, without. And I deleted all apps except for YouTube. I don't know why I kept YouTube because I still end up scrolling like through YouTube shorts on occasion. But I would say overall, it's a step in the right direction in that um, I don't have this urge to constantly grab my phone. And knowing now, now that it's kind of clicked that when I pick up my phone, I'm not going to have those apps on there. It makes it a little bit easier to remind myself to just put the phone down and maybe just sort of as they say, be present. And, uh, and yeah, so it's, it's been a little bit nice, been able to spend a little bit more time with my own thoughts, I guess you could say. So yeah, there's that. And, uh, the reason last night, by the way, um, I'm a little tired today. The reason last night was a late night was because it was a fight night. So, um, and this was actually, you know, well, not actually, this was a fight that I was uh, pretty psyched about because the main event was one of those that it's just super compelling. Um, it's against uh, Erickson Lube and Sebastian Fundora. They're fighting at a, 154 pounds, super welterweight. Um, Sebastian Fundora, who I've probably mentioned here before, is 6'6", six, six, or 6'5 six, and a half officially, I think. But we'll round it up and say 6'6", six, six, and he fights at 154 pounds. Um, and if you can imagine what that looks like, it's um, it's kind of insane because Lubin is not that tall, and uh, so this is <laughs> now obviously Sebastian's a little bit closer in frame than than Lubin is in this case, but Sebastian is at least uh, seven inches or so taller than Erickson Lubin, and uh, a lot of people were uh, betting on Lubin to win um, the guy in the blue shorts. But uh, Sebastian pulled it out. And he's a, he's a very interesting fighter in that despite being so tall and having such long limbs, he doesn't use his reach, at least from the outside. He's actually very effective at using his reach on the inside. And, and he'll, he'll just club you on the inside with these long arms and just uppercuts. And he's very, very good on the inside. Somehow he's found a, a niche for himself at that height working on the inside. And so far it's been very very successful for him, but just to kind of give you uh, an idea of some of the shots from the night, um, these are not my fully processed shots. I usually do um, for my purposes, just kind of one more round of, uh, of uh, processing to give them a little bit more pop, but there you go, just some of the shots, and you can see how <laughs> he's so tall, you can just see how he's he likes to fight on the inside, and he just mauled Lubin. You can kind of see as the picks go on here what happens to Erickson Lubin's face. They both had a knockdown. Yeah, this is – he was just getting torn up, um, and it wasn't looking good for him. Lubin's corner ended up stopping the fight after the ninth round. Uh, this was an interim bout, which means that Sebastian Fundora is now next in line for a title shot. Good for him. Um, but the fight lived up to the hype, and I was very excited about it. So – uh, thank you for the compliment, Robert. Um, so, yeah, there's that. But anyway, <clears throat> I want to get right into the topic at hand here. And we're just going to go right into the main topic, which is the new teleprompter I got. This is, now the title says, the perfect teleprompter setup. What did I call it? Um, you think you could take him? <laughs> uh, the perfect tele teleprompter setup. For me, at least. And by the way, when I say perfect, I mean perfect in the um, in in the conceptual sense. So, a little bit of background and context. I've been looking for um, a teleprompter for a while that I can use for these live streams, but also just for making videos. So, <clears throat> the previous setup that I had, I had my camera. And I'll, I'll show some of this in a little bit. I don't want to reveal it just yet. But I had the camera. Above that, I had a field monitor, which acted as a third monitor from here. So I would put my notes on it 
or I might have put OBS on. Yeah, I put OBS there, and then I would put my notes over here. And that was kind of okay if I had to refer to OBS. I could kind of look up, but I was looking off camera. If I needed to look at my notes, though, I was constantly going like this. And that was annoying to me. So I got the idea from watching um, Levi Allen, who's a YouTuber. He did a video about a uh, podcast setup or just kind of his in-studio live stream setup that he put together. <clears throat> and he was using a teleprompter to read his notes. I thought that's really clever. I like that. My problem has been, though, that uh, the camera, I mean, it's a little bit more than arm's length away for me. Uh, so I need a wide angle lens to accommodate the space that I have. And um, wide angle lenses and teleprompters don't don't mix very well. Got to get some stuff done while listening in the background. No problem, man. Do your thing. So I, I, the issue I've had is just finding a teleprompter that can accommodate a wide angle lens. Right now I'm using the Sony a6500 uh, and I put, I used to have the 12 millimeter Rokinon lens, uh, manual lens on there, um, which, uh, which is fine, but it's so wide on this camera that it wouldn't work with a teleprompter. So right now the 16 to 35 millimeter 2.8 uh, G Master is on there. And um, on the Sony a6500, which is a crop sensor camera, that's more like a 24 to, I don't know, 50 millimeter lens or something like that. So at 24 millimeters, um, the, it, it works, it'll, it'll get by. So, but, it, but from what, from all of the research I did, a lot of the teleprompters that you can get really only work at a maximum angle of 24 millimeters. So, um, I ended up finding one and, and what I re but what I really wanted to do, like the setup that I wanted to, to have was a teleprompter and then a screen underneath of that which could act as, a, as my third monitor. So I could essentially have a monitor or be looking at my notes directly and I could add things within my, li my line of sight, just drag them into this monitor. Um, so what I was trying to do initially was find a teleprompter and then purchase a separate, um, uh, like they're, they, they actually make like portable monitors that almost look like iPads that can kind of fold up and everything. And they're super thin, but the problem is a lot of those portable monitors are only, they're like a minimum of 15 inches, which is too big for what I need. So then I thought, okay, well maybe I'll buy a tablet of some kind and use like an app and do like a wireless third monitor type setup. Um, I didn't want to buy a new tablet, especially if that's only what I was going to be using it for. So I was actually looking around the house for um, uh, old tablets that we have because I have three kids and they all love their electronics. So uh, I tried to pick up a couple tablets that they haven't used for a while. There was two Samsung tablets that we had and neither, I guess they just hadn't been used in so long that they wouldn't even start after charging for, you know, more than 24 hours. I tried all the different techniques to get it started, wouldn't work, whatever. So uh, ultimately, um, I realized, you know, I need to find a screen. I, I, need, I, I didn't know what I wanted. I, I was going down this rabbit hole that wasn't being, that wasn't very fruitful. I wasn't finding what I was looking for. And somehow I, I, I just, I guess I just changed the, the search parameters I was using and ended up finding something. And what I ended up finding was, oh great, now I gotta, do I have the, let me, let me find here. Okay. So what I ended up finding was the ICANN home stream video conference teleprompter with seven inch monitor. So this is actually a teleprompter that came with a monitor that has an HDMI input. It's a seven inch monitor. So, um, and this again, conceptually is the perfect solution for me. Cause now I have this little monitor that's going to fit with this little teleprompter. That's just enough for me to, to, uh, you know, um, have what I need to be able to put the notes that I need on the screen. So like right now I'm talking into the camera. Let's see. There we go. Talking into the camera and I can look directly at my notes as I'm doing it. So this is, bring this over here. Okay, this is the teleprompter. And uh, it's it's the same as the, t the Parrot teleprompter that I have, uh, which I've used for a while, uh, which slips right, uh, a little, eh, there you go, you can kind of see that. Not very, not very uh, good with focus, but let me turn it up a little bit too. 
So it slips right on the front of the lens. Depending on the size of the lens you have, they have these different rings that you would put on the end of the lens, and then the teleprompter just slips onto that. And um, this is the teleprompter, and this is the monitor that it came with. It's not as blue as it looks in on the screen right now. Um, but yeah, and you can just hook this up, which I have, to my PC to use as an additional monitor. And now I can put my notes or whatever I want and be looking at those instead of having to look above or below the camera to, to see what I'm looking at. So before, I had a field monitor up here, which was used as my reference monitor for notes. But now I can look directly into the camera and see my notes. And this is the setup that I've been wanting for a long time. Down here, I um, mentioned this briefly. So I also used to have a small field monitor here, which is a little bit smaller than this, maybe five inch. Um, it had an HDMI input and output, and this served as my reference monitor to make sure that my framing and everything was good. Um, the, the, where was I going with that? The issue with that was, there really wasn't, well, and the reason I needed it was because the Sony A6500 doesn't have a flip out screen. If I had a flip out screen, I might not have had it. But here's the thing. So I'm going to come back here. So when I record videos, like part of the reason I'm, I'm setting up the studio the way that I am is that, you know, I'm all about efficiency. I, I don't like spending a ton of time setting up gear and moving gear around. Um, yeah, I'm pretty busy a lot, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing that. So part of the goal of this whole studio is to be able to set things up in a way so that I can quickly record and make videos, but also, you know, quickly do these podcasts and things like that. We're going to talk about some OBS issues I've been having a little, a little bit, but obviously if you're recording into OBS, you'll get decent quality footage. But if you're a perfectionist like me, you want great quality footage and you lose a little bit of quality when you run everything into a computer and then, you know, there's all this compression and stuff that happens before it gets to OBS and then OBS records it and it, it becomes an issue. So what, I, what I've what been wanting to do is find a way to record directly in camera when I'm doing these things um, so that I don't have to worry about the loss of quality. The problem with that, and especially with the A6500, um, I, you know, if, I, if I'm outputting to a monitor and then I want to record in 4K on the camera... The, once I hit record, the monitor no longer works, and I and I have to trust that everything's in focus and everything looks good, which is not optimal. Um, plus, there's overheating. You know, if I'm recording for 30, 40 minutes, especially on you know an older camera like the A6500, overheating could be an issue as well. So what I wanted to get, what I've been wanting to get for a while, and just have put it off, is the Atomos Ninja Five because. This can act as a reference monitor. It has an HDMI in and out, which means that I can use it as a reference, but also send a signal out to the A10 Mini, which goes into, goes into OBS. But now, if uh, I want to record a video, maybe I know I'm going to be recording for a while, and I want to get full you know, 4K high-quality footage, I can output the signal from my camera to the reference monitor and record into the Atomos Ninja 5 now. Um, and... Uh, still be able to use the reference monitor, not have to worry about overheating because I'm not recording directly into the camera. And then after I finish recording, all I have to do is take the uh, SSD drive that came with it out, plug it into the computer, transfer the files, and I'm good. Um, I don't have it for these angles here, but um, you know, I, I probably wouldn't use this angle all too much if I'm recording. And if I am recording using this angle, I think in most cases, recording into OBS would be fine for this particular angle. But if I'm here, there's just a lot in the frame, a lot going on. I would rather have a good high quality performance because this is going to be my my main camera angle anyway. You know what I mean? So now this is this is the first test run that I'm giving to this teleprompter. So again, it's perfect in concept, but I'm already experiencing a couple issues with it. <clears throat> The first being, and it may just be a position, uh, a positioning issue with my the Ninja Five, which I have mounted underneath, but it leans down just a little bit. So the top of the monitor um, that's underneath the teleprompter is a little bit cut off. Uh, I had to raise the camera up to be more eye level so that I could see a little bit more. 
I might try moving the Atomos Ninja 5 on top of the camera to see if that prevents it from, from leaning down uh, moving forward. Uh, also notice that if I have, because I use Notion, the note-taking app, and I had the light, um, light, the light theme, not the dark theme on, and that was when it was too bright, when the monitor was too bright, it was creating a cast, and you could kind of see it in the background. So I just switched that to the dark theme, and it seemed to work fine. Um, what else? I mean, I guess that's kind of it for now. It would be nice to maybe change the glass angle a little bit. It is nice and wide. The, the 16 to 35 right now is fully um, at, at 16 millimeters. Again, it's on the A6500, so it's more like 24. But from what I can tell, I don't see any vignetting around the outside or anything like that. So that's great. Um, and by the way, the, the, other thing that, uh, the other thing that I needed with this teleprompter was I, I needed – I wasn't going to spend – you know, a thousand plus dollars on a teleprompter. And there are a lot that before I found this particular one, I found a number of other teleprompters that came with their own monitors like this setup. But I mean, they're like two plus thousand dollars and they the teleprompters are usually bigger too. So this one was $300 came with the monitor, came with the teleprompter, all the accessories you need, even has a little remote that I think, um, if you use it with a phone, uh, you can remote with the app, like if you want to read notes and things like that. But for the purposes of what I'm doing, um, with a few tweaks, I think this is going to come in really, really handy for me, this whole new setup. So I'm happy with it. Just got to play around with it a little bit more. I really got to figure out how to, um, I got to play more with the Atomos Ninja 5. I know, you know, it's, the, the, it just has so many different features that you can play with. I just got to make sure that I tweak them the right way to work for what I need to do. One thing I am noticing, though, which luckily doesn't come through uh, in OBS, but there is a very warm cast on the Ninja 5. Um, so I think I do need to do a firmware update. I'm waiting on a cable so that I can connect the SSD to my PC because it's it's not like a typical... Uh, it's one of the, like the internal SSDs. So I got to get a, a cable adapter. I'm waiting on that. I'm going to try to do a firmware update, see if that works. If that doesn't work, I'm going to use a, uh, monitor calibrator to see if I can fix those colors a little bit and go from there. But ultimately this is, uh, I'm happy about this. It's been a long time coming. If you are interested in the teleprompter or the Atomos Ninja 5, I have links to both, uh, affiliate links to both of those in the description of this video go check them out. Uh, and as we go, and as I kind of have more chance to play with these, I will keep you updated on, uh, on how they go and how they work and how I like them. So moving on from that, um, <clears throat> we'll talk about OBS a little bit. Now I didn't prepare for this as much as I should have. I, I did some testing with it uh, about a week ago and excuse me, and um, w was having some issues. The issue that I've been having with OBS, I have a, a love-hate relationship with OBS. It's a great tool. Um, the, the problem is, again, when it comes to quality, as I mentioned earlier, when you're running signals through everything and, you know, when you're recording into OBS, there's some compression and things that happen along the way that's going to degrade the quality of your footage a little bit. It's not going to be like recording straight out of camera. Um, I've tried, I've spent a lot of time tweaking settings to really get it as best as I can. And it's kind of at the point where it is as best as I can get it. But the big issue that I've been having is, um, the feed that you see coming in right now does not, uh, is not the same as the recording. And I'm trying to figure out why. So the, as, as I'm looking at, and, and I can't do, I can't really show you what I show you on, or what you what I see on OBS right now, because it'll do the crazy infinite mirror effect. But if I'm looking at it right now, the picture looks great. Uh, it's, it's contrast and everything is awesome. It's, it's where I want it to be. The problem comes when I play it back, uh, or when I finish a recording and play it back. In a lot of cases, it's much darker. It, it just bumps up the contrast. The dark areas become super dark. And, you know, I lose detail in some of those areas. And it's just the recording is not the, the you know, the, the, the colors that I want. It's not, it's not the look that I want. Even more confusing and frustrating is that 
um, even if I can tweak the settings, there are some settings that I've found, like some higher quality settings where I can record and uh, get them to look essentially the same as the, the incoming feed, but then I'll put them into Premiere and they'll look different in Premiere. So the, <laughs> the colors will look fine in OBS, the colors will look fine in the recording, but then I'll get them into the Premiere and then they look darker or just different. And I, I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring out why that is. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty decent with OBS. I've been using it for a number of years now. Um, but on the technical side, it, gets, uh, it can get a little confusing. So if anybody out there is watching and can tell me why my footage looks different, and maybe it's a, maybe it's a premiere problem, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I can't figure it out. I actually, I did, I shouldn't have deleted them, but I did some screenshots and things like that. Um, of like the, the feed in OBS versus in premiere versus, and then I would even export some videos in premiere and then the exported version would look different than the recorded. Ver it's just, it's just such a mess. So that's part of the reason why I have the Atomos into five, um, again, for recording, I think for, for YouTube, like the way that it streams, by the way, the stream that you see on YouTube, from what I can tell, looks just fine, uh, looks the same as the OBS stream. So it's really just the recording part of it. Um, and, and I've tried tweaking some of these. You're probably not going to be able to see this, but let's try. Uh, yeah, this is pretty, pretty small, but you get the idea. Um, if you go into, is it advanced? So I've been tweaking these video settings. You don't have any option on render. You have to use this direct 3D 11, but color format in B12 is, uh, kind of like, it's like a lower quality version of it but this is the version that I have found records the best and gets the most, most accurate when I record. But if I change this in V12 to uh, I444, which is technically like the most high quality um, color format, then I, I run into more, it's, uh, uh, it's just, it's just a pain. It's just so frustrating. I just want to get it to a point where it looks the way that I want it to look in all aspects. So Anybody wants to help me out there, I would be uh, I would be very happy about that. How about Elon Musk uh, buying <laughs> Twitter? By the way, that should be interesting. Anyway, I'm not going to spend any time on that, at least not today. Uh, although that is probably a subject to explore for for future uh, shows. Um, I've worked in social media for a long time, so the implications of that are interesting. But we're not going to spend a ton of time on that today. I've got. Uh, a busy day ahead of me. So just wanted to show off the teleprompter. Again, check the links in the description if you are interested in uh, getting one of those, if that's something that you've been needing. Um, and if you're still here and if you've enjoyed the show, if I provided any value for you, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button wherever you happen to be watching or listening. And also follow me on social media at Ryan Hafey on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And we're going to go ahead and call this one done. So keep on creating, making, and doing. Wait, where's my, where's my applause? There we, there we go. Keep on creating, making, and doing, and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.